Hey team, it's Charlie. So this week we get to meet a brand new villain on Doctor Who in Keeley Haas, and we get to see the Doctor rob a bank. Peter Capaldi himself described it as a combination of Ocean's Eleven and 2001 Space Odyssey. I would also add Wizard of Oz to that. So let's do top five moments, Easter eggs, and then I'll do my review. And quick reminder of the giveaway, it's now open. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. I'll wait just a sec. Okay, everybody ready? Here we go. Here are my top five moments. Number five, the planet Carabraxos. If this was supposed to be a little bit Ocean's Eleven, I'm guessing Carabraxos was the Bellagio Hotel. This was probably one of the most well-developed new locations in Series 8 so far. Because of the MacGuffin of the heist, they were able to describe every detail of the planet and the bank down to the last speck of dust. I wish we could get an episode like that inside the TARDIS. Journey to the center of the TARDIS kind of did that, but I feel like this episode explained the bank better than that episode explained the TARDIS. And then there's the culture behind the bank, which is just as interesting as the architecture. Did you catch when they killed that red shirt at the beginning? Miss Delfox said they were going to terminate his account, meaning the bank would seize his assets, and they'd throw his family in jail. That seems pretty hardcore. Maybe Moffat just hates white collar criminals though. It also kind of explains how Miss Carol Braxos could become the wealthiest person in the universe if she just kept terminating accounts and taking people's fortunes. I really liked the idea of the architect in the episode, but did not like the reveal. I had actually kind of hoped that they would do something really crazy and make the doctor be the architect and just have his mind wiped multiple times. To be fair though, that would have completely destroyed the theme of fixing regrets of the past. And they already kind of did the multiple mind wipes thing with Strax during the 2012 Christmas special. Did anyone else think of the gangers from Rebel Flesh and Almost People whenever the solar storm destroyed the planet? It's not the same solar storm that destroyed them, but it's the same type of storm. But moving on to number four, the new monster, the Teller. Technically not a new monster, as we learned. But as far as the episode explained, it's psychic or their psychic, and its function at the bank was just to prevent people from cheating or stealing from them. I like the idea that it hones in on the emotion of guilt. I saw that a lot of you told me on Twitter that it reminded you of the Minotaur from God Complex. In both cases, the story was about turning your own thoughts against you. So I do wonder if Moffat was thinking about that episode whenever he was writing this one. And then there's one of the rare moments whenever the doctor's brain gets scanned or whenever he pours his memories out. I kind of wondered if we were going to get a big clue for Missy, but they ended up making it much more simple and just kept it within the plot of this episode. It did make me think about the TARDIS phone again. I'll talk more about that during my review, just because the Doctor made that miming phone motion way too many times for it to be a throwaway joke. I would have liked to learn a little bit more about those Teller creatures too, but now that they're in an episode, they're canon, so they can always come back later. I feel like Moffat wouldn't create something really interesting like those if he didn't intend for the Doctor to ask a favor of them at some point in the future. Back in Deep Breath, he said he remembered his face, but he didn't remember why he picked it, so it's totally possible that they could help the Doctor by deep scanning his brain to find some clues. But onto number three, the Doctor's new awesome toys might also offer some clues about Missy. I don't know if the dimensional shift bomb was Time Lord tech, but he had it on him and I don't think anyone else gave it to him. And then there was the quick return buttons that he handed out. So the bomb he explained shifted molecules to another plane of existence. He didn't really say which plane, like it was eSpace or Pocket Universe. It was a lot of fun, but the quick return buttons were what interested me the most. If Missy had her own TARDIS, that could be one of the ways she's snagging people with the same type of technology that the Doctor's beaming people back to the TARDIS. It's still a little soon to tell, and we didn't see her in this episode, so I don't think a lot of the things in the episode had anything to do with Missy specifically. But I always love it when the Doctor yanks new gadgets out of his pockets. Like David Tennant's machine that goes ding in the 50th. It just makes me feel like the Doctor has pockets that work like the TARDIS. Like they just have infinite storage space. But on to number two, the private vault. I'm going to have to rewatch the episode a couple times just to see. But I feel like there are a lot of visual Easter eggs for other bits of Doctor Who history. The Egyptian symbols really made me think of Pyramids of Mars. And the upcoming Mummy on the Orient Express episode. But a lot of times the set designers will insert their own easter eggs that don't really have anything to do with the overarching plot. Like whenever they're picking things for the background of episodes, things that won't be in focus of the camera. Doctor Who does recycle a lot of their props so sometimes when we see familiar things it's probably them just being practical and saving money. But every once in a while I like to think that the set designers or the crew people just try to insert their own references or things that they think will be really interesting to Doctor Who fans. So if you did see something in the vault that you feel is like a reference from an old episode of Doctor Who, just write it in the comments. But 
my number one thing from the episode, Keely Haas as Miss Delphox and Madame Carabraxos. She's now the second big person this season to play multiple roles in the same episode. Clara is the impossible girl, but I'm not counting her. Samuel Anderson did it first, playing two big characters in the same episode, and now Keely Hawes. So I wonder if this trend is going to continue, or if it's going to be relevant to the finale. I really loved her characters, but I do feel like they got shortchanged. I feel like the episode was just really short. Like they basically crammed Ocean's Eleven into like a 50 or even like 40 minute episode. Really like the last 10 minutes was not part of that heist plot. Even despite that, both of her characters were really interesting. I feel like the clone had this really interesting life of its own. Like you could tell whenever it knew it was going to die, it got really upset. It was kind of like Rebel Flesh with the gangers getting thrown in the acid. You know, she was going to get thrown in the incinerator, just thrown out with the trash. It's important to note that Madame Carol Braxos did not die at the end, so Keely Hawes could come back as another clone in a future episode. I think one of my favorite things about the big reveal was the way her story mirrored the doctors. Her looking into her own eyes, trying to change deep regrets from the past. It's basically what's happening in series 8 with the doctor right now. So it's just a great way to tie this episode back into the big theme of series 8. So my big questions for you guys, what was your favorite moment and do you think the Keely Haas or the Teller monsters or the creatures are going to come back in a future episode? While you guys are thinking about that, here are a couple of references that I saw in the episode. I already mentioned a couple that I saw, like the gangers in the vault and the TARDIS phone, but here's an explanation of all the criminals that popped up on the screen. First, there was the Terraleptal, which was mentioned during the Christmas special, the Slothene, who was also mentioned in the Christmas special, then there's a Sensorite from the Sensorites. That was actually the seventh story from the first season of Doctor Who. This is Absalom Doc from the comics. Then there were a couple people from the Sarah Jane Adventures, including Andrew Vax and the Trickster. And here's Captain John Hart from Torchwood. Overall, I feel like they were like the biggest Easter egg in the episode, but if you saw any others, just write them in the comments below. Overall, I gave the episode a B. It was a lot of fun, but I feel like the plot dissolved after they rescued the Doctor and went down into the vault. Keely Haas was very interesting, and she's a great actress, but I feel like she didn't get enough time to develop her characters. This whole thing with one actor playing multiple versions of themselves seems very suspicious, despite this episode not featuring Missy. The supporting guest cast were also a lot of fun, and I feel like they got enough setup that they feel like they could be coming back in future episodes if Moffat ever wanted them back. It's always hard to tell with him. Sometimes a bunch of people just show up in the finale. The only real problem I had with the story was the explanation at the end. There was all this build up for the first half of the episode, and then we had that Wizard of Oz moment where the curtain was thrown back and we saw the frail dying person behind it all. I just feel like that could have been a little bit more grand and a little less offhanded. I think whenever stories like this feel too rushed, we can just blame the fact that they're trying to make things less serialized this year. As a consequence of that, they have to set everything up and resolve it within the 50 minutes of the episode, so it just feels like it was a little too easy for them to rob the best bank in the universe. I know a lot of you guys don't like it whenever we get to really big finales or big episodes and Moffat tends to combine unrelated things to try and make something bigger, but I have a feeling that that's what's going to happen in Series 8 like the TARDIS phone and other little bits from these one-off episodes. Like they'll all add up to whatever's going on with Missy. Despite any pacing or logic issues, the story was still a lot of fun, but I really do like serialized stories more. I feel like it just allows them to do a much more complex storyline. I do totally understand why they're not doing that this series. They just want to make it easier for new viewers to jump on. Next week looks really crazy though. The Doctor's going to be play-acting Headmaster Cole Hill. My next video that I'm going to be posting tonight is going to be all about the Christmas special, so be sure to subscribe to get that. Don't worry, it won't be too spoilery, it's just going to be a fun bonus video. They announced the cast. Don't forget about the giveaway either. I'll be announcing the winner of that in my Q&A on Sunday. So right now, you can click here to get the bonus video. I'll add the annotation as soon as I post it tonight. And you can click here to get the Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Let's all high five, and then we'll meet up in a couple hours to talk about the Christmas special.